This is a, <laughs> a talk called Learning to Walk in the Zephyr OS Ecosystem. My name is Samantha Mitoyish. I am not affiliated with Nordic or Grand Centric. So a little bit about me. <laughs> uh, I have some years of experience in embedded software. Uh, I'm coming from a computer engineering background, starting with digital logic, uh, a bit of bare metal, Riot OS, Reartos. The main point here is that I don't have embedded Linux experience, so a lot of these things like kconfig and DTS were a bit new for me. Uh, I started working with Zephyr in 2021, and this talk is a little bit geared as an intro for people that have heard of Zephyr, maybe have played around with it, but haven't really started a big project with it. I'm hoping to give some tips, uh, some, some things, uh, mention some things that were not quite obvious to me and I think might be helpful. So it all started very well. Uh, I got an NRF uh, DK board. Those are very well supported. There's plenty of samples. Uh, the boards are supported. You quickly get LEDs blinking, VLE demos running, etc. But as some of you might know, when you work on a project, your, your desk looks like that pretty soon. And so you have many different boards with many peripherals, different versions, different iterations. And all of a sudden you have to maintain all of it, right? Because the client wants it. So this is where Zephyr actually came to shine. It's also where the steep learning curve came in, but <laughs> it, came, it, it, come, it shines there because of two things, because of the device tree and kconfig. And this big mess in the middle links it all together. So actually this was mentioned by the speaker before me, but the kconfig knows about things from the device tree. It's all linked together, compiled out. I'm not going to go into detail here, but I think we can look through a small example. Now, I do hope all of this is, is still relevant with the new hardware model, but they said it didn't touch the DTS. So <laughs> let's add, uh, this is actually fr just from a Zephyr sample. So you can find all this code online. Um, on the left side is a snippet of a DTS. It's actually a DTSI, so an, uh, a device tree source include that you can include in your main board DTS. Uh, and it includes a one wire temperature sensor. Uh, the right side is the DTS binding that defines what has to be included for that sensor. So what has to be defined. Uh, in this case, anything needed for a one wire slave and the resolution. And on the left side, you see that uh, it's uh, using a serial. It ha it's, uh, the peripheral is this Maxime DS18V20. It has the resolution, and it's enabled with the status OK. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is this com compatible property, because this is how it links together and knows that uh, whatever you're adding on the left side is related to this YAML file on the right. And when you combine that with a kconfig, some magic happens. Because as we saw in the build, build diagram before, it's all linked together, right? And um, because this uh, status was OK, it's enabled, et cetera, this depends on DT has Maxim DS18V20 enabled is actually auto-generated. Uh, so, the kconfig on the left is an option, a software configuration option for your to include your driver for that sensor. And as long as you have all the dependencies, it will just automatically get enabled. Following with a little bit more logic is, is the if def for the CMake on the right side that says, OK, well, if that driver is enabled, then we also include the source, right? So all that's really cool because on the top level of your application, if you notice uh, your application configs on the left in the project.conf, they don't even have to mention the particular sensor. They just say, we're using a sensor that has one wire. And on the right side, everything is abstracted out except for one line at the top where you get the device. But that can easily be moved 
uh, to a higher level driver or put in some if def uh, conditionals and can easily be ported or you can easily use it with different sensors, right? Everything else is completely abstract and for free because as long as you have a sensor that's, that can be used for this in your board and you compile for that board, those drivers just get included automatically and everything works. So you can very easily switch between iterations of boards or boards with different peripherals on them. So my tip for you, my tip number one, is use device tree bindings and kconfigs to automatically enable hardware drivers. It might not be easy at first and you might not have time in your first demo, but it's worth the refactor because it really, really makes it easy to port between boards later. Bonus tip, commas and DTS are underscores in C. This tripped me up for a while when I was starting out. It's not obvious once you know it's easy. Um, as I said, the device trees are not easy. Uh, the syntax is a bit tricky. The errors can be a bit terrifying. There are some nice talks doing deep dives that have a lot of helpful hints and show you how to debug things or how to work and how to work with them, how to make new ones. So I recommend checking that out. Now, moving up the stack a little bit, looking at the same exact example, what would happen if we commented out config log, noting that we are, we are trying to enable sensor log level debug that clearly depends on config log? Who knows? Go. You get a warning, correct. But it compiles, right? So it compiles just fine. And somewhere up above it, you get a warning. But often in bigger applications, this warning is somewhere like you have to start scrolling. And you often miss it, right? Because you compile, you try, you compile, you try. You're not always reading all the logs. Don't trust the. So, so what, what uh, options are actually enabled are in your .config file. And as we see here, the sensor log level, it's not even in it. It's not on set, it's just not in it. So that's my tip number two. What you set in the project.conf is not always what you get. The source of truth is really the .config file, so the compiled output. Thankfully, though, we have the West Meta tool. And it provides a, a little bit more of a sane way of looking through the configurations. It has all the uh, op uh, application level options available uh, and shows you what's enabled and what's disabled. It's interactive, so you can try toggling them, etc. But moreover, it gives you a lot more info about each option than you can see in the .config file. So you see the name, the type, its value, what it depends on, and if those dependencies are met. So here you see that uh, it depends on log and sensor, but log's not met. So then you have no value. Moreover, uh, it shows you all the, all the defaults and possible values, but it also shows you how exactly that kconfig was included. And that's quite useful because kconfigs can include other kconfigs. And sometimes it's not really clear where it's coming from. Uh, this can really help you track down what's going on when you're in a mess. So that's number, tip number 2A. You can't trust the project conf, but thankfully you don't have to go looking through the dot config manually. Uh, you have the West build dash T menu config or GUI config tools. GUI config is just another uh, rendering of the same thing. It's the GUI version. Uh, and those help you navigate the configuration system. I went a little bit fast. Here's a couple more West commands, though. So as I mentioned, the West build dash T, the dash T is for system targets. It does not build your board. It builds other system targets. That's what has the menu config and the GUI config, but there's a lot of other nice hidden tools in there, like RAM report, ROM report, pun cover for stack analysis, and partition manager report. Uh, and other things, so it's it's nice to go have a look 
or what's available there can be very helpful for developing. Uh, and then there are also West manifest options. Of course, there's a lot of other West things. These are just two I want to throw out there. Uh, West manifest also helps you manage dependencies, but at the repo level. So every like if you're working on a big project, you're probably including other repositories, importing them, using them, etc. And uh, West YAMLs are also imp nested, importing other things that import other things, and it can be hard to track. There are some uh, commands in West Manifest that help you make sense of it all. So either see them all at once or freeze the hashes so that uh, it's not dependent on branches, et cetera. Uh, as I said, I went a little bit fast, but are there any questions or comments? <laughs> okay, I hope you learned something. <laughs>